looks like it is going. Hi everyone, I'm TigerHawk23. Today I'm going to talk about batteries, and those batteries in particular are lithium ion, also known as lithium polymer. Slightly different, but uh, still similar in the context of this video, which is uh, how safe are they? Lithium-based batteries are very unsafe, basically. They are, um, chemically speaking, they are pretty much one of the most unstable battery technologies that we've found, but um, they are very... Uh, oh, someone in chat already. Marie says uh, moin, and good morning to you too. Uh, moin moin. Um, that's the, I think, German or Dutch or something for morning. It's a slang. Anyway, um, so yeah, they are very volatile, but the thing about them is that they also have uh, some very useful properties, like um, they are energy dense and uh, not weight dense. Um, if you have a lead acid battery and a lithium battery of the same size, the, um, the lead acid battery will be a lot heavier. It's got lead in it, which is pretty dense, um, but they store a lot of energy. Um, uh, they have a uh, pretty flat discharge curve. They hold up uh, current pretty well under a load. Um, very useful, but uh, yes, they are also very uh, hazardous. I don't know about dangerous, because they don't, uh, it's not like you can't trust them, they're gonna attack you at any moment. They're, uh, they're hazardous, like cars or power tools or anything. Um, or he says German. Yes, that was my, my first guess. Moin is uh, German slang for morning. Um, so, if you follow the news at all regarding phones, you've probably heard lately that um, Samsung has been having difficulties. Poor Samsung. Um, their Galaxy Note 7, which is um, not their main smartphone line, but the kind of larger screen meant for like writing on. It comes with like a little uh, pen kind of input device um, meant for a little heavier use, I guess, for you to draw things on and that sort of stuff. I don't know. But uh, they've been exploding, according to the news. And that uh, might not be absolutely precise. By the way, the, uh, the image that I've got over here is um, a pair of what's called 14500 lithium ion batteries. That means they are 14 millimeters wide, uh, 50 millimeters long, and cylindrical. That's the exact size and shape of an ordinary AA battery. Do I have one here on my desk? I'm, I'm sure. Somewhere? Well, I can... I, th I think somewhere. What's this? What's that? Uh, here we are. A double A. You already know what this looks like. <coughs> Fourteen five hundred. Is that only instead of uh, alkaline or nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium? It's uh, lithium based. Uh, which means higher voltage, better um, better current under load, etc. and so forth. And um, actually, I shouldn't necessarily say higher current. There are some kinds of lithium battery chemistries that are capable of quite high current, 20, 30 amps, etc. And also some nickel metal hydrides that are specifically manufactured, designed for high current. They can do something similar. But... Um, Generally, the kinds of lithium ions that you'll see, like these, for example, are basically, uh, I don't know, 
three to five-ish amps, so not particularly high, but um, I'm going to contrast this with uh, really old batteries, uh, the uh, what's called heavy duty, like carbon zinc or something, I don't know, but um, flashlights are called flashlights because when they were first introduced, you would turn them on and you would just get a flash of light and then it would fade. And the reason for that was not the bulb, it was the batteries. Because um, under no load, they are fine and can put out a bunch of current, but as soon as you give them a load, the voltage sags all the way down to pretty much nothing. Um, this is present to some degree in every um, actual battery, meaning not a uh, uh, an illustration or diagram in a physics textbook. Um, uh, I've probably used mag lights at some point. Uh, the ones from 10, 20, nearly 30 years ago, somewhere around there. But um, you'd put fresh batteries in them and then turn it on and it's great. And then five minutes later, it's, uh, it's like a candle. Uh, that's because uh, the alkalines also sag a bunch under load and they don't retain their voltage very well over their over the course of their discharge. But lithium ions are pretty good, pretty handy. It's easy to uh, uh, maintain a specific current of load at a given voltage when you're using these batteries. But again, the whole point uh, of this video is, yes, they are dangerous. Um, the Note 7 was having uh, problems, not a lot. Um, I think it was like 24 per million, which isn't zero, but it's... Uh, You don't have a very big chance of having a problem if you have a Note 7, basically. But you do want that chance to be zero, because your phone shouldn't explode. None of the other ones do, apparently. It's very rare for that to happen. Um, but, um, so do they explode? That's an interesting question. Uh, explosives are a certain chemical that um, when impacted or affected in a certain way uh, undergo a process called explosion. Now it doesn't just mean lots of energy in a small time or anything. Um, balloons don't explode when you pop them. They don't technically explode. They just, you know, burst, I guess. Uh, dynamite is an explosive. TNT, that's explosive. Um, um, cartridges of ammunition for firearms are not explosives, they're propellants. Uh, they burn very fast and the expanding gases push the uh, projectile down the bore, but uh, not actually unexplosive. So do lithium batteries explode? Not Really, um, they can undergo a reaction where they burn. Um, this is sometimes seen in flashlights. Um, if you keep one on for a long time with no uh, with low quality batteries, and we'll we'll get to that of why everything isn't exploding because they are literally everywhere. Um, but uh, a flashlight is often uh, it's a tube shape, right? And it has a, a lens at the front and sometimes they're waterproof, right? And what is it about waterproof devices? They are sealed. Um, and what happens when you have something burning, fire? It releases gas, right? And so uh, there's more um, more pressure in there. So basically, you have a flashlight that's sealed, and then the batteries inside catch fire, and they start um, what's, what's, what's known as vent with flame. 
Um, so they vent with flame, and it's a sealed unit, so the pressure builds up. And then eventually, one of the components in the flashlight cannot handle the pressure. And it's generally the front window, which may be glass. So you have a flashlight sitting there, and eventually, you get um, shards of hot glass blown out the front. It's very bad. Um, now, why doesn't this happen all the time? Why is it news that the Note 7 is doing something like this? Um, I'm guessing that the Note 7 is probably waterproof to some degree, uh, so it's likely sealed as well. Um, so these phones are sometimes catching fire, but they're not exploding like a grenade or something. Um, and also the dangerous part of grenade isn't the explosion, the fire. Contrary to what many Hollywood movies have, it's not just a big fireball. It's, um, there's an explosion that doesn't look like much, and all around that explosion inside the grenade is a bunch of ball bearings or um, a coil of wire that's had notches put into it. So it's all the little bits of fragmentation. That's why it's called a frag grenade, fragmentation grenade. Um, so it's not actually the fire that's the problem. It's the bits of stuff. Now these phones aren't doing that, as far as I've heard. They just kind of catch fire and burn, which is also bad. I'm not excusing it, but um, not actually exploding. Um, and actually, this is still being in the news nowadays because um, they're still doing it. The replacement phones. People send in their recalled units, and then they get a new one, and those are catching fire too. That's really bad. Um, they've had three do this now, and they're not uh, making it known. I uh, uh, There's a pretty fresh news article about this on TheVerge.com where I read about it. Um, apparently someone uh, had their phone catch fire, wasn't charging or anything, just sitting there on the nightstand, and um, was talking with Samsung at some point about it, and uh, someone accidentally sent him a text message to this person who had his phone catch fire that... Um, that they were considering, um, what was it that they said? Uh, bah, bah, bah. I want to get you the exact quote. So someone from Samsung saying this, and it is, just now got this. I can try and slow him down if we think it will matter, or we just let him do what he keeps threatening to do and see if he does it. Um, doesn't sound incredibly concerned about the situation with their products catching fire. Still, the replacements, that's so bad. Um, so this is the third one that's happened. The first one was on a flight. Um, that's pretty bad. They had already, uh, the TSA Transport uh, Safety Authority, I believe. Um, basically the um, Aerospace Security Administration that handles that um, had already banned people from boarding flights with their Note 7, and now it's being allowed again, I guess, uh, or it was, I hope, and uh, happened on a flight. So that's, that is bad. Um, the next one was uh, some kid had a phone and it started burning while, while they had it or something. That's got a be bad for the, the kid's emotional well-being as well as physical. Uh, just holding mommy or daddy's phone and it caught fire. I don't know what I did wrong. It's gonna... that's gonna be a problem. But uh, then some latest one was some guy whose phone caught fire while sitting by itself. 
Um, uh, someone else in chat. Christian says, hello, brother. Hi, how's it going? Um, so they know that it's still happening. They're not sure what to do about it, but they don't seem as contrite as they keep saying they are, uh, that they're so sorry and they're going to do everything that they can to fix it. Um, you've probably noticed that big companies these days do a lot of communication that sounds like it came from a robot. Um, form letters, canned responses, etc. Um, companies these days have grown very large with very many customers. So uh, it's not like, you know, um, John Johnson, the Smith in a town of 50 people. Um, if someone has a problem with the horseshoe that he made, they can take it to him and say, this horseshoe has a problem. And he'll be like, okay. And he needs their business because there aren't that many people in the town. Um, there are what, six or seven billion people on this planet. And all of them are a market for a global company's products. So if one person is pissed because their phone got fire, uh, they've got a few hundred million more customers where that came from. And that goes for everyone, not just Samsung. Uh, game companies, largely, because uh, mostly because a lot of them are free to play, so they don't really want to... Uh, they don't have the resources to handle all the people who are using their service for free. Uh, Christian says, speak Spanish. I'm from Ecuador. Oh, that's cool. I have uh, I have a cousin, second cousin, I think, who lives in Ecuador. Um, I sort of speak Spanish. Uh, I learned it in high school, took it for five years, and got the highest grade on the, the test so I could... Uh, uh, counted as a college class, but then I didn't use it for, uh, I don't know, 10 years or so, so I don't really know it very well anymore at all, but um, sort of, some, maybe. Um, where was I? Uh, phones, big companies, yes. Um, so Samsung is doing damage control and trying to figure out how to make this situation the least bad for their company as possible, which makes perfect sense. What else would they do? But um, they're not sounding like it bothers them per se that a customer's phone caught fire in their... Uh, not their internal communications, because this, this was sent to a customer. Um, what they intended to be internal. Um, so that's probably bothering some people. Um, uh, some carriers are, I think the four major ones are like, if you have a Note 7 of any kind from any time, just take it to us and we'll refund it or give you a replacement phone or something because it's just you don't know if they're gonna catch fire just randomly uh, cars don't catch fire while you're driving another grocery store generally um, so it is what sounds like a low failure rate um, I think it's more um, more a more common event than a car accident, but uh, cars are also hazardous. Um, we drive them real fast and they weigh a ton or two, and we keep pointing them at other people and hoping that we can turn. It's a bad idea overall, but um, so yes, lithium batteries are very hazardous. Um, they do not explode, per se, technically. Um, they can cause conditions that 
look like an explosion? That would make someone say, did that thing just explode? The answer is, uh, technically no. And then, uh, person whose phone looks like it exploded will be displeased with you, because, uh, you're correcting them on a technicality when their phone is in flames. It's bad. Um, so why doesn't this happen more? Uh, like I said a few minutes ago, lithium batteries are everywhere. Uh, they're in your phone, they're in your laptop, they're in your flashlight, if you have a decent flashlight, which I do. Um, actually, I've never had a, a lithium battery problem, but I made a nickel metal hydride battery pack with like uh, nine cells thereabouts. Was it six in each? Five? Uh, I think it was just nine. Nine cells. Uh, caught fire. There was a... Uh, not caught fire, but it was uh, it was shorting while I was charging it. And uh, good thing I was doing it outside on concrete. Or it would have been very, very bad. Um, yeah, that wasn't a good time. But... Um, phone, laptop. Uh, laptops have what's called an 18650. I've shown you this flashlight before. By the way, this is a Nightcore SRT6. They are great. Simple. Turn it on. Brighter. Dimmer. Isn't that easy? I love these. They contain, this one contains, it can run on a pair of smaller, non-rechargeable lithium batteries, but I have it running on an 18650, which means uh, 18 millimeters wide, 65 millimeters long, and cylindrical. Um, if you have a laptop or netbook, you probably don't have a netbook, because they're not really produced anymore. That's a dead format. People just get tablets now. Anyway, uh, if you have a laptop, something with a, a removable battery pack, maybe, um, it'll have a bunch of these in there. Um, some cars also have been, electric cars, been made with battery packs and sits in a whole pile of these. This is probably one of the most common battery formats in the world now. Um, one of the only ones for electronics, because uh, they have very excellent electrical properties, and they're light, and uh, they work very well. So why haven't all homes everywhere burned down long ago? Um, a, you have to really abuse them, you have to really do something wrong. But uh, the big thing is that, uh, yes, they're hazardous. So there are various uh, protective measures you can take. This is a... is this a protected cell? Doesn't say. No, it does say. Built-in circuit board prevents overcharging, over-discharging, and over-discharge current. What does that mean? Um, some of the ways that you can make a lithium-ion battery do bad things are to overcharge it. Uh, over-discharge it, meaning turn it on in a device and then let it run down to zero and then just keep it on. And over discharge current, uh, putting it in a situation where you try to put too big of a load on it. Um, the last like little, little bit of these things, just a little bit in the top there, is a, a tiny circuit board. And if the circuit board detects um, too much current in this or that direction, or the wrong voltage, or um, uh, reverse polarity, I think, protection probably. It doesn't say that, they generally do. Um, it will just cut power, it will cut the circuit, um, and then it will be rendered inert, but it's not dead, you didn't brick the battery, um, you put it in an appropriate charger and the circuit will detect that, and uh, it will make the battery charged 
again it will turn it on so and also many devices have their own uh, protections in them um, uh, Christian is uh, is off to do something else bye brother good luck thank you thanks for joining me for a little bit and um, So yeah, the reason that they're not a gigantic problem and the reason that they're okay to use is because they are covered with safety features uh, in the cells, in the packs, in the devices, everywhere. So um, this is a bit like a situation I, uh, a conversation I had a few years ago, I think. Um, as it turns out, Oddly enough, um, people who are high on pot turn out to be slightly better drivers, on average, than those who are not. Now, why is that the case? Um, they know they're high, and they know that that will impair their driving ability, which it does, and so they are extra, extra careful. They drive slower and they make sure to try to look everywhere even though their their hands may be fascinating or whatever i don't know but um it is more hazardous to do that but they take more care now the conversation i was having that prompted me to research and learn this is that um if someone knows this and doesn't actually understand the logic behind it they may think I'm going to go get high and be a better driver. And then they will be less careful because they are overconfident, thereby um, more than negating the benefits. Not really benefit. I don't know. But it's, uh, yeah. So they are hazardous, these batteries, but um, we're careful with them. And that's why they are generally pretty good, except the Note 7 must have some kind of problem, um, design issue, because uh, they think it's solved, and they send out a new phone, and it catches fire. Um, so I just, that's kind of bad, bad situation for Samsung. Uh, I haven't looked at their stock prices, but I bet they are not doing well in that regard. Um, yeah, if you have a, a smartphone, a phone of any kind, actually, my old Nokia 2610 had a lithium polymer battery. Uh, this is a slightly different uh, lithium-based chemistry that uh, instead of being wrapped up in a, a steel tube, um, it's a, they come in little, little bricks, rectangle things, um, very high current capable, um, and pretty, pretty common for, um, remote control applications, RC, uh, even in cheap things that are like five or ten dollars, um, if you have a remote control toy, that you fully charge it up and then you start playing with it and it lasts five or ten minutes that doesn't mean the battery is junk that means it was drained at a very very high rate which it handled so good for it um 5c 10c and uh c is a measure of discharge that's uh, basically related to time if you have a battery that can do <clears throat> that can handle a current of one amp for one hour. It's a one amp hour battery or a thousand milliamp hour. Um, if you take one hour to discharge that, you will happen to be doing it at one amp. And that's a 1C rate. Um, if you have a 2500 milliamp hour battery, which is a common capacity for nickel metal hydride AA's these days, um, if you discharge it at 2C, <coughs> um, that's 5 amps, and it can do that. Um, 
if you have a larger battery, um, say a five amp hour battery of the same chemistry, just a little bigger, uh, it can do the same to C. Um, <coughs> so these are very small batteries for these remote control toys and they're very uh, uh, light, meaning um, very low weight density. Uh, so they're pretty ideal for that. But uh, they are very hazardous. Um, they're often produced without any kind of protection. And so you have to get really nice chargers that uh, carefully balance everything out. Uh, you don't want various cells in a battery to be at different states or um, uh, conditions of wear, etc. <coughs> so I think I might be wrapping up now. Um, batteries, lithium batteries. Yes, they are hazardous, but yes, they are everywhere, and yes, they are fine. Unless you have a Note 7, but not really, because there is still a very low chance that anything will happen, but uh, it's not zero. It's not zero for any of them, but like statistically, how many how many ZTE mavens have caught fire like that? Probably zero. I don't think they're as popular anyway. Um, but the rate of failure for these like that is probably zero so far. Uh, I'm sure if they made enough, maybe it would happen to one of them, just st statistically. But uh, we're not hearing about problems with others. While dozens of Note 7s have caught fire, because they've sold like 2 or 3 million-ish, and 24 failures like this per million, a few dozen. That's... It's still very rare as these things go. Uh, like I said, you have a much bigger chance of being in a car accident. I've been in a few car accidents myself. Um, pulled into a parking space that I didn't quite have enough room for and scratched the car next to me. That was annoying. Um, and what else? What else? I hit a deer. That was a pain. Um, driving back from, f from a fishing trip late at night. Um, down to 80. And uh, suddenly there was a deer in my headlights just kind of popped up and then crunch. It wasn't like uh, it was standing there in the lane real far in the distance. Now I was driving and it kind of approached. Nope. Was driving along. I mean, overhead view. Driving along. And this thing is, you know, going. And I'm driving. And then just showed up in the headlight and then it disappeared yeah not a fatal accident for anyone in the car and not a fault of the car but you know this is just statistical chances of problems occurring what are the chances that you'll be in an accident when you get into a car what are the chances that um a chamber with a round in it will discharge the round accidentally. That's something that could happen, uh, especially given certain conditions, like if it's very, very hot, that's called cook-off, that the heat can make the primer go off. Uh, Ghost Script is in chat. Hello. Is it bad to leave your laptop plugged in and charging all the time? Um, most likely, no, because... Um, uh, they're probably using cells with individual protection in them, and if not, then certainly the battery pack itself has them, and also the laptop as well has uh, protections built in, and um, they have some very nice charging circuitry for these. Um, the way they work um, in a very just what they're doing, not how they do it way, is um, if it detects that the battery pack is 
um, a little lower voltage is, has used some power already, then they will allow the plugged in charger to charge. And when it detects that it's full, um, which is a negative delta V, when a battery is full, it uh, behaves a little differently. Don't remember the actual delta V charger. Delta V charging. Um, the minus delta V bump that is indicative of end of charge is much, much less pronounced in NIM than NICAD. Um, so the voltage kind of dips a bit, I guess, when it's a full charge. There are various ways to detect, of detecting it, and they do. When it detects that it's full, it will stop charging. It will just stop pulling power from it. Um, this is in contrast to uh, dumb chargers, uh, which was used to be called just a battery charger, and then they came up with smart chargers, etc. Uh, that was just, you put the batteries in the charger, and then you plug it in, and it's on like a timer or something, and it just delivers a very low charge constantly for, I don't know, 12 hours or something, which is a 1 12th C rate. Huh? But uh, chargers these days don't do that. Um, you would be hard pressed to find such a dumb charger. Maybe if you go to a department store and find a charger that's like a dollar or two, like the cheapest junk you can find, maybe. But uh, any reasonable charger these days, especially the ones built into uh, electronic devices, are going to have ways to uh, counteract that, these problems that can come up. So yes, you can plug it in and leave it plugged in, it's fine. Uh, I would not recommend using your phone or laptop or whatever uh, until it turns itself off, because it's so empty. Um, it's not going to catch fire, but um, the more you do that, the the more you the more quickly you reduce the lifetime of that battery pack of the cells in there. Um, ideally, set it to charge when it's no less than uh, like thirty or forty percent, if you can. Um, so yeah, you can leave it plugged in; it's fine. Um, but try not to let it run down all the way. It used to be a thing that you needed to do this because of the, uh, the memory effect, the old nickel cadmium batteries. Um, you're supposed to discharge them all the way because if you recharge them when they were at say 15%, then the memory effect, they would, uh, they would lose 15% of their capacity or some amount there. And, um, you'd end up with the battery with eventually a lot less capacity that you then had to replace. Um, and also the old rechargeable batteries, the, the NICADs, were um, not really intended for most uses that people had. Um, they were intended for moderate drain use immediately, like within a day or two. Otherwise, they would self-discharge, meaning they would lose their their charge all by themselves. You could just let it sit there on the shelf overnight, and they would uh, lose their charge. I don't know how else to put it, but it, they don't they didn't work that way. So uh, what we did in my family, we didn't know about self discharge. That wasn't a wasn't a thing uh, that the common consumer knew about. So um, we would charge batteries and then put them in the cabinet until we needed them for a remote control a few months later. And it wouldn't work very well, because of course it didn't. Uh, these days we have, um, where did I put that battery? Can I put it back? Yeah. This AA that I showed you in particular, Sony Cycle Energy, which is a rebrand of the, uh, I think it's Sanyo? And a loop. That was the the first uh, low self discharge 
uh, nickel metal hydride batteries. Uh, you can charge these and then leave them sitting for months and they will still have most of their charge when you try to use them. It's very handy. Um, lithium ion cells also have very, very low self-discharge, almost none. Um, of course, the devices they're usually in, like a phone or something, uh, even if you have it off or sleeping, it's still using power. It's called quiescent current, current when it's quiet. Um, I have an ebook reader that uh, if you have it like on and active and then just tap the power button to turn it off, blank the display, etc., uh, it drains a whole battery in like a week or two, which is pretty annoying to have to, like I can't actually have it on. If I want to use it, I have to basically turn it on and have it boot every time. I don't use it often enough. It's kind of an old I only got it a few years ago. But check that out. That's that's good times, right? You can put books on there and I have like a how big is the SD card? Like thirty two gig or something? I slapped in there. If I could click the thing. Uh, 32 gig. High performance. 50 meg per second. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's not going to be accessing at 50 meg per second in here because it's just uh, an ebook reader. But um, with a 32 gig card, you can put like all the public domain books that have been published to date ever on your ebook reader and have everything. Isn't that splendid? I love that idea. If only I read more. And when I do want to read, I have I have a computer. So it's really cool though, isn't it? Anyway. Um in summary, uh I don't know if anyone has any more questions, so I'll keep talking for a bit. Um if you have more questions about batteries or battery related stuff, batteries and battery accessories, um, ask in chat. And I'll be happy to answer if I can. But uh, the basic idea is that lithium based batteries are extremely hazardous, but there are many protections on them everywhere in the cells, in the batteries, in the devices, all over the place. So they're generally not a problem. And uh, even the Note 7 that's having issues is uh, most Note 7s are doing fine. But uh, it's supposed to be all, not most. And that's that's the issue. It's very uh, very noticeable when a phone catches fire during a flight. That's bad. Um, and it's only the Note 7s that are doing this, so. Um, I think that will be the stream for today, if I don't get any more questions. Um, and um, other than that, I think that's it. Um, tomorrow is going to be what? Tomorrow's going to be a game. I don't know which one. It could be League of Legends or Dota 2 or Shantae Rescues Revenge Director's Cut or um, Euro Truck Simulator where I am a truck. I don't drive a truck. I am a truck. And I zoom around hauling, you know, cyanide and sulfuric acid and, and chimneys and rice and stuff. Um, so remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, particularly comment if you have a suggestion for uh, videos you'd like to see specifically for technology stuff. Uh, 
technology commentary, Python, etc. Um, I'm slightly running low on ideas. I don't know if it's okay to to do a, a news commentary every other day. But um, I don't know what other programs to write with y'all. So uh, like, comment, subscribe. Join me tomorrow and the day after. I stream every single day. Um, and I will see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining me in chat. Uh, Marish, Kristen, and uh, GoScript. And I will see you next time. Have a good one.